there is no better time, is there, Deirdre, to check in with somebody who knows more about banks than most people on this planet. Yeah, we are very happy to have with us here in the newsroom, Gary Parr, Deputy Chairman at Lazard. Now, in January, Gary, we have to congratulate you in advance on becoming right. a member of Lazard's Board of Directors. Glad Thank you. to see you. Yeah, thanks. We want to ask you right off the bat, we were talking a lot this morning about Bank of America and Citigroup. Bank of America, of course, naming the new CEO. Is the bank, though, too big for anybody to manage? I think that that's clearly an issue. I think, indeed, with, with Brian getting the, uh, the position, it was important that they get someone to lead this complex organization. And you know, it's like Citigroup. Citi and B of A are both very complicated organizations. Can someone do it? Probably. Uh, is but is it right going to take one? a lot of work? I think he's a good choice. And that I think they also needed, I think the internal, someone who knows the place can stabilize people quickly. And they need, they need stability on a lot of fronts in order to therefore focus on making their great franchises better. But Gary, if, if, yeah. Bank of, if there are questions, at least in your mind, as to whether or not Bank of America is too big to manage, yeah. should Brian Moynihan's first job not be to think about breaking this bank up, maybe? Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's a matter of sequencing. Uh, arguably the best time to, if you're going to break something up or realize value, you want to do it when things are working. And so getting some things better in place, the business is stabilized and uh, at least fundamentally profitable. They have some great franchises. So getting them work better would actually increase their optionality to well, do other things, to think about how to split the company. What are the parts you would keep no holds barred? Oh, the retail bank in the U.S. is a great business. The retail distribution of the Merrill Lynch is a great business. Credit cards, because they have very high share. Uh, and then they have a global network for originating financing and such from the old Merrill Lynch. So those are, those are all good franchises. What, in general terms, Gary, is the future for financial conglomerates? Can they still earn clients' trust, for example, yeah. given all the conflicts out there? Which business lines, not just at Bank of America, but in a broader sense, really do belong together? Yeah, I think that that's going to be the challenge for a number of companies over the next couple of years. And I think directionally we will see a number of institutions selling non-core businesses. What they would have defined two years ago as a core business uh, will become a non-core and simply because they're going to become more focused. Uh, th that's happening on the array of size of institu in institutions and companies. And I, for example, in my career, I've never seen so many businesses for sale. So out of you're financial have a, institutions. I mean, you're always busy, but you're going to have an extra busy year, it seems shift like. As to what in, we're doing, in, right. As in so 2010. The, I think we're going to be very busy seeing, with companies selling subsidiaries, selling businesses that are no longer core. And there'll be a rearranging of those portfolios. So that'll go on for a couple of years, is my guess. But by the same time, we see boutiques like Evercore all of a sudden getting into trading. So yeah. is that a trend that we're going to see? The others becoming more conglomerate and the big ones becoming less. I, I think that's still a very small, it's a very connected line of business. They're doing sales research tied to some of their advisory work. So that's, that's a, it's not a distant move where someone could say investment banking in Thailand is pretty distant from doing a retail deposit in uh, you know, Arkansas. Uh, we only have about 40 seconds before yeah. we take a quick break here, but I just want to ask you, if you had to measure risk appetite out there on a scale of 1 to 10, where are we now versus where we were six months ago? Yeah, amongst financial institution six months ago we were a one if that's low intolerant unable. I'd say we're about a five in financial institutions whereas two years ago we were a ten we're a long way from being really ebullient and people feeling bold about doing things in financials